So as the demand for greener power in the world is increasing, there's more of a demand for wind power. And wind power is naturally intermittent, uh, and which presents difficulty when trying to incorporate it into a, into a power grid. So we had the opportunity to work as a team to incorporate uh, wind power generation with a nuclear power plant to uh, minimize the amount of electrical and heat store oversupply. And we did this by trying a variety of systems that incorporated uh, batteries, e electrical batteries, heat storage, uh, and use PID controllers. Um, so first we started out with step tests to just kind of see how initially the um, system responded to our changes. Um, and you can see here, this is our battery, our electric battery. And then um, this is our heating oversupply. Our heating system is over here. And these are the um, wind coming in. And we made changes to our nuclear load base right here. Um, so we tried a bunch of different methods. We tried um, one controller versus two controllers to control the electric and the heating um, side of things. And then we also tried to add electrical storage and heating storage in one situation and we did stability tests as well to kind of see the outer limits um, of how far we could push the PIDs. So, um, in order to kind of evaluate this quantitatively, we used a, um, we created this deviation measure. It's kind of like a sum squared error, sort of, but not quite. Um, it's an average deviation from the target, which is a zero, um, which you want an oversupply of zero. Um, it's, the, it's the average deviation from zero um, over the length of, of the simulation. Um, each run tended to have a different number of simulation points, and so we wanted to average it over that. And so we would say, okay, if we want to use the system, we want it to have a uh, smaller deviation than the system would with no controller. So we started off with the base value here for both our electric and our heating oversupply. And so in order to be advantageous, the system had to have lower deviation, uh, deviation values than those. And so this is just a couple of the systems we tried that seemed somewhat feasible. Um, there were others that we tried, but um, weren't as uh, robust, I suppose. So we have, um, for example, we use a PID controller, but took out the battery to see what um, kind of result we had there. Um, and so we actually had, uh, had a worse deviation on the electric demand, but it improved the heating quite a bit. Um, if we had both types of storage, both the electric and the heat storage, um, both of our deviations improved. Um, but by far the best uh, system was a PID, con PID controllers, uh, one for the heat and one for the electric, uh, one for the electric systems. Um, optimize the tuning with the electric battery, but no heat storage. Um, and that, that, helped them, that helped the most. And so this is a couple of the notable, um, uh, notable graphs that we ended up with. For example, here's uh, these uh, come from having no controller at all, so that we take as our baseline. And so when you add the electric and the heat storage, for instance, um, you improve both of these. You can see that the peaks uh, don't come up, come up about half as high. Um, the scales are different, but uh, but everything seems to be improved. And even uh, and this over here is our optimal system, um, which pretty much any controller um, improved our improved our electric oversupply by quite a bit. And then most other tuning and other improvements uh, still improved it, but not by as much. And so the major improvement beyond this system comes from the uh, heating supply. So um, it's just kind of a graphical representation of, um, 
of our optimal system. So in conclusion, what we found was the optimal system included two PID controllers um, that would switch um, depending on which one was had the maximum output uh, to keep it from going into a negative range. And it was also optimal to have one electrical battery and no heat storage device. And what we'd recommend going into the future is uh, to improve the system even more is possibly more rigorous tuning uh, than we already did. And we'd also recommend doing further analysis, incorporating maybe a gas or different power sources, uh, possibly natural gas because it can change um, without less um, damage to the system or less effects on it. And we'd also recommend trying it with, uh, with solar power as it's also an intermittent source and incorporating that to the system. So, thank you and do you have any questions for us?